Back in the days before the internet and gun violence, there was no way of telling which games would be good and which would be dog shit before you actually got your damn hands on the thing and started playing. Whoa, nice graphics! I'd like to get my hands on that game! This meant an awful lot of childhood trips to Extravision, or Blockbuster for the rest of the planet, renting a game and just rolling the dice. With the sheer volume of games released during the PlayStation 1 and 2 era, the result for all us 90s kids was an unprecedented exposure to just fucking weird shit. And while we all remember the greats like Metal Gear Solid and Spyro the Dragon, some of the best forgotten train wrecks have retreated deep into the crevices of our epic gamer brains. Simpsons Hit and Run? Fuck that! I'm talking Simpsons Wrestling! A game that was about as well balanced as my grandfather, who is a seafaring alcoholic and also dead. I used to think Ned Flanders resurrecting himself after you beat him was bullshit, but after watching Tyson Fury utilize that exact same technique in real life, I now view it as a legitimate strategy and also believe in God. If the 80s and 90s were the video game renaissance, then the 2000s must have been the wild, wild west. There were no rules. Games were being commissioned, developed, and sold based entirely on brand recognition alone, and so for every major movie release or popular kids show, there was a wave of video games made just to cash in on that Harry Potter dollar. Sometimes they were good, like Spider-Man 2 or Jurassic Park. Other times they were Monsters Inc. or Beyblade Let It Rip, a game so cryptic that no one on God's flat earth has ever actually figured out how to play it. And I'm not saying that this era of video games was bad, quite the opposite. But for every kid who got Double Dash on their 7th birthday, there was a hundred more who received Monster Racers, Toy Story Racers, or the one with Crazy Frog. Because renting games was so cheap, there was much more room to experiment. Once every other week, my dad used to take me and my older brother down to Extravision and flip a coin to see who gets to put it all on black. I mean, my little brother was there too, but... He was like, three, so, you know, fuck that guy, I guess. <laughs> and this led us to discover some of the greatest games ever made. I mean, the list of games Jack would rent when he won the coin toss includes stuff like Sly Raccoon, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, fucking Metal Gear Solid 3. The list of games I would rent on such occasion include Jackie Chan Stuntman. Uh, this concludes the list of games that I would choose to rent. There is an alternate timeline where Extravision never went out of business, and I am still renting Jackie Chan's Stuntman to this very day. And while obviously these are the games that stood the test of time, today I want to pay a little respect to the gems we left behind. I mean, you say Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, I say Thrasher. You say Smash Brothers Melee, I say Digimon Rumble Arena. You say Red Dead Redemption, I say that one cowboy level from Time Splitters 2. Hail! Hail! Yes, GoldenEye for the N64 is one of the most important games ever made, obviously. But what about GoldenEye Rogue Agent? A game where you get Jedi powers for some reason, and also James Bond just fucking eats an entire helicopter 15 seconds into the first level. We all spent countless hours of our lives trying to get the sea captain and his young Italian deckhand to woohoo in Sims 2. No one is denying that. But how many of you can look me in the eye and tell me you've done battle with the alien time narcs dressed as a giant fucking rat in Sims 2 DS? No, I will not be providing any further context. Real quick, don't even think about it. What is the best Crash Bandicoot game? If your answer was anything other than Crash Bash, I'm gonna need you to unsubscribe right this fucking second. Just because none of these games are making anyone's top 10 list, that doesn't mean they were any less important. These games stayed with us, down to the smallest detail. The sound of Harry Potter's janky-ass PlayStation 1 jump. The anxiety of trying to dispose of that giant bomb before it explodes in Spider-Man. The sheer gut-wrenching horror of that ghost leveling. God fuck! Unlike today, where a game being based on a movie or TV show was usually a massive red flag, Back in the day, it was actually a mark of quality. Well, no, most of them were still awful, but sometimes they weren't, and that means something, goddammit! Path of Neo for the PS2 and Xbox is better than all three of the movies combined, and I can prove that with science. There was a DDR game for the Jungle Book that had some fucking bangers, and I can still hear the announcer's voice when I close my eyes at night. You got a high score? Please enter your initials.
Or what about the absolute rake of educational magic school bus games that made learning fun by taking you to wild and interesting places like the moon or the past or inside your fellow man? Oh, I'm sorry, did you think this was going to be a normal field trip? With the frizz? Get the fuck out of here! And then there's the mountain of amazing original titles. Games like Pursuit Force, Pandemonium, Tactics Advanced, Age of Empires, fucking Custom Robo Arena, which was the first game I ever beat 100% and no one ever talks about it. I only know of two other people who've even played it and they're twins, so that still only counts as one. So please, show this video to your friends, share it on social media, fucking download it on LimeWire if you have to, I don't care about the views. I just want everyone to take a moment and remember some of the defining games of our childhood that time has forgotten. Because a world where no one remembers Beehive Bedlam is a world that I don't want to drink in. Thank you so much for watching my video. Do the things, follow me on the thing, and join us next time when our topic will be... Video game related, probably. Look, I'm gonna level with you. I usually ad-lib these outro couch gag things, but I got way drunker than I thought I was going to recording this thing, and I just do not have the capacity for it right now. So, I don't know, Here, here's the, the Dire Dire Doc Space Jam remix, I guess. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Come on and slam, hey, you wanna jam. Hey, now what you gonna do? 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 Party people in the house, let's go. It's your boy JC, I so pass that thing, watch me flex behind my back. You will watch next to the jam, all in your face, what's up? Just feel the bass, drop it, rock.